Hey YouTube, how are you? This is Stacy, uh, the Apostle, the Prophet, the Pastor, the Evangelist, and the Teacher uh, coming to you. And I'm, gra I'm glad that you all are joining me because this is a topic that I started um, studying in depth on last week. And I wanted to cover this topic because I'm starting to hear this scripture being misapplied so many times. And I want to let Christians know that... Um, the judge not scripture is not a license or it's not a get out of trouble free card. This is um, a scripture that I hear used out of context so many times. And so I want to talk about does the Bible really command Christians not to judge? Um, we always hear people throwing out this scripture that's found in Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 through 5 that says judge not that you be not judged. We don't ever go to the second verse, or the third verse, or the fourth verse, or the fifth verse, but I would like to on today, because the next time the Lord um, urges you to speak about something that is wrong, and someone who does not want to be corrected, who does not want to answer to the Word of God, and who does not want to be accountable to right and wrong, the next time they throw out the scripture, judge not, the Bible say don't judge. You have a right, and I want to give you permission, because the Bible gives us, a, us permission to let them know what I'm about to talk about on today. Verse 2 says, okay, we know judge not that you be not judged, okay, but verse 2 said, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will be able to see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Verse 5, hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck. From your brother's eye. Many times we go through situations. And God literally causes us to examine ourselves. And take the plank out of our eye. But once God has removed that thing from us. The Bible says. Then you will clearly see. So that you can remove the speck. From your brother's eye. Have you ever gotten something caught in your eye? Some some trash or something just flew in your eye. Maybe a piece of hair from your eyelash fell in your eye. Or maybe some sand got in your eye. No matter how small it is, it hurts like the devil when there's something in your eye. And I remember as a child, my mother would try to remove um, a little piece of trash out of my eye. She would blow into my eye to make my eye water. Now, for her to blow into my eye, I had to be physically <laughs> held down by my father. I was kicking. I was screaming. I was squirming because that was a little bit too close for comfort. I did not want my mother blowing in my eye. But there was some good in it. She wanted to blow into my eye. Even though it was temporarily uncomfortable so that she could make my eye tear up, cry, and prayerfully, you know, that piece of trash that flew in my eye would be removed. You know, many times God sends the word, blow, the breath, uh, inspired, um, um, the same word that we get inspiration and respiration and inspiration comes from the same word breath. Praise God. And breath, um, the wind of God, the breath of God comes to clean out those things in us that are not like Him. The breath of God breathes life into us. But many times, we don't want to be still enough to allow God to remove that thing from us. Praise God. And when the Bible talks about the eye, the eye is also um, one of those words that the Bible uses as symbolism for the heart. So 
we're getting into some deep things when the, when those things affect your heart. Now, there are some topics and some issues that people really just do not like for you to help them to remove that speck out of their eye. And one of those issues is homosexuality, the gay, the lesbian, the bisexual um, type of lifestyle. Um, a lot of people, when you let them know that God is not pleased with a homosexual lifestyle, they get all huffy and puffy. They get all offended. Judge not, judge not, judge not, judge not. Well, I tell you what, we're going to talk about in this series of videos the times in which the Bible clearly tells us that we can judge. We can judge, number one, when we have been cleansed and we have been forgiven by God. Then we can, be based on the Word of God, based on the Spirit of God, that is in us as believers through the receiving of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to discern. That's one of the spiritual gifts that God gives the believer, to discern that which is right and that which is wrong. What the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5 is, don't judge as a hypocrite. If you are a thief, don't talk to another thief and tell them you are a thief. Because that would be hypocritical judgment. However, if this is something that God has removed from you or something that is not a part of you, yes, spiritually speaking, you have a right to judge the situation. Not the ultimate judgment as in condemning someone, but the ultimate judgment because that you know that, that belongs to God. But the initial judgment of saying that action is wrong. That is the job and the responsibility of the Christian. Um, the Bible also tells us in Matthew chapter 7, just flip over a few chapters. Those of you all who like to um, who like to throw out that judge not verse, flip over a few verses rather in, in verse 16, in verse 15, in verse 20. Because Jesus tells us that we need to discern those things. You know, we need to discern what, what is right and what is true. So we don't judge according to our own assessment or according to our own flesh. But we ought to, in the spirit, we ought to very well judge that which is right and that which is true. The Bible also lets us know in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 through 5, that the saints will judge the world. Yeah, the saints will judge the world. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse 3, Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more are things that pertain to this life? So God wants us to judge. Not as a hypocrite. Not as one that is um, self-righteous. Because within ourselves there is no righteousness. Our only righteousness comes through Christ. But once Christ has shed the light of his spirit on the situation, Yes, we are to judge that situation. Now, when I say judge righteously, I want to back that up by John chapter 7, verse 23 and 24, where the Bible tells us, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Now, this is where the saints of God have to be very careful because... Many times we use our own opinions, our own biases, our own preferences, our own, you know, cultural understanding of the way things should go, our own human wisdom, our own personal standards to judge another person. Now, the Bible said that that is not the way we ought to judge another. However, we do have a right to make a judgment using God's word. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, for those of you all who love to throw out that judge not scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 through 15 says, but, um, in verse 15 especially, but he who is spiritual judge all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So we must understand that when we are spiritual, and we have to be, amen. When we are spiritual, God lets us know we must judge. We cannot just close our eyes, 
Well, the Bible says, I can't judge you. So even though I know you dead wrong, and I know you living wrong, and I know you doing wrong, I'm just covering my eyes because, praise God, Jesus loves you, and I'm not supposed to judge. And that is not the truth of God. I want to tell you in love, that is not the way God would have us to be as, as saints of God. We ought to look at situations. And if it's a red wall and somebody's standing on the side of you calling it a blue wall, yes, it's okay to say, sister, brother, in love, that wall is not blue. That wall is red. Now, if they come back with you with, don't judge me, praise God, you have a right to tell them by the Spirit of God, well, according to the Word of God. And then you fill in the blanks. Okay? That's my phone ringing. I got to go. I got two services today, but I just wanted to come on and give you all that inspirational nugget. I love you. Remember, you make ministry possible. Bye.